All right, we're back. Welcome back to Steps to Freedom. Um, I want to talk about uh, tonight, we're talking about Miracle List number 11. So these is, this is the Miracle List that I took from Brother Mike. He's got a couple of them out there, merged them together. So if you're like, number 11, if there are 11, you know, yeah, there's, I have more than 11. So um, there's two articles that we're going to be talking about tonight by Brother Mike. And we're going to look at the scriptures a little bit too. So I want to say thanks for hanging in there with us. We have two more lessons after this. And then uh, we'll take a break. And then we'll start again in August, uh, probably the first week of August. So Steps of Freedom course number nine. Last week was anxiety disorders. And um, how many of you watched it? I sent you a link. Thank you. Okay. Um, even if you only just saw a little bit of it, there's a lot of content in that video. A lot of content. And I would say basically what you get out of anxiety disorders is anxiety or, or fear, spirits of fear, they get in everywhere. And they attach to lots of different types of spirits. So you might have... Um, Mind control spirits, fears right there. Rejection, fear is right there. So whatever it is, witchcraft, fear is there. So there's these fear spirits, um, they're all over the place. Okay, so um, this week we're talking about how Satan controls the mind and Satan's counterattack. I'm going to set this down right here. You're going to go on to the website hardcorechristianity.com and you're going to find the button called under the menu find teachings and I'm going to go there right now actually I decided I just decided right now so you're going to go to hardcorechristianity.com right there Let's go to the main website. I'm showing this. If you could zoom in right here, would that be okay? Hey, ladies, come on in. All right, so you're going to go to the website. So this is your homework for the next week. And like I said last time, you get what you give. Okay? You get what you give. And these two topics are very important for every single person watching and everyone here. So you're going to go on to hardcorechristianity.com. You're going to go to the teachings button and scroll down. And there are these articles that Brother Mike has written. You're going to go all the way down to the bottom. And you're going to find mind control how Satan dominates the human mind. How Satan dominates the human mind. And the other article is Satan's counterattack. Now we have how Satan controls the human mind in the lobby. So if you want a hard copy, pick it up. Okay? I'm going to talk briefly about those two articles tonight. Any questions about that? All right. Great, so I'm going to go back here. Let's see where it brings us. <clears throat> um, when you think about the mind, we understand our body here at um, Hardcore Christianity. Mike got a special revelation from the Lord where he understands that the human body, the human being, not body, human being is separated into five parts. And the Bible talks about the heart, the mind, the spirit, the body, okay? And so the revelation that Mike got was that the human being is broken up into, you have your brain, you, you have the mind, you have your soul, where your emotions are. You have your spirit, where your spirit man is housed, and the Holy Spirit, if you're born again. You have the body, your physical body, and your conscience. The Bible talks about uh, 
that you can sear the conscience. It's the, pl it's the seat of your morality where right and wrong is. So those five parts. So specifically talking about the mind, the mind. We, we hear a lot of times in church, well, I have the mind of Christ. Okay, so the mind is where you process information. The brain is where the mind is located, right? The brain is like the hardware. The brain is the hardware. The mind is the software. Does that make sense? It's where the processing happens. All right, so here are these two articles. Um, the Bible also tells us that... Um, Let's see if I have the, the scripture right off the bat here. Um, I don't. Great. So uh, it talks about uh, the, that there's lies and we have fears. How Satan attacks the mind. <clears throat> In that article it talks about fears, lies and fears. And I put two um, pictures up that will come up here shortly of a snake and a scorpion, okay? Because in Luke ten nineteen it says Jesus gave us authority. He gave his disciples authority to trample on snakes and scorpions. And when I thought about that, I thought, well, okay, a snake, I thought the devil, right, in the garden with Eve. And what did he do? He lied to her. He lied to her. So I want to recall that story. It's in Genesis 3. Um, verse 1 through 5. I want to read that to you. All right. I don't know if that's going to go to my picture. But if you want to turn there with me. Genesis chapter 3. There it is. I think I'm leaving it. She's got the pictures. Yeah. Okay. So we're back on now. So in article one, Satan controls the mind. It talks about lies and fears. And it made me think about that scripture in Luke 10, 19 that says, to, Jesus said to his disciples, behold, I give you power I get, and authority to trample on snakes and scorpions. And so I thought about the snake, and the snake is a liar, right? Let's read in Genesis chapter 3. It says, Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field. All throughout the scriptures, evil spirits are compared to the beasts of the field. So we know that this serpent was really Satan, an evil spirit the evilest of spirits, Satan himself, okay? And it says that he was more cunning. He was more crafty. He was more sneaky than any of the other beasts of the field. And since the Bible talks about the beasts of the field and the birds of the air being evil spirits that torment, steal, lie, we, we see the connection there. So there's more than one crafty, cunning spirit out there that deceive, okay? And he said to the woman, God has indeed said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat it or you shall, or nor shall touch it, lest you die. Now we have to go back up to Genesis chapter two to check. So if you just look at that part of the story, you might say, okay, all right. So you can't touch it. You can't eat it or you're going to die. And now the, the serpent is debating with her. But really, you have to know the Word of God, or the enemy will come and tell you something and change it just a little bit, 
And if you don't know it, you'll fall for it. That's one of the ways the devil controls the mind. So let's look at chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2, verse 8. It says this, The Lord planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put man whom he formed. Okay? He put man there in the garden. And out of the ground the Lord God made every tree grow that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life was also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And then if we go back, if we go down to 15, then the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to tend it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man saying, of every tree of the garden, you may freely eat. Verse 17, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in that day, you will eat of it and you will surely die. What did Eve say? She said, we can't eat it and we can't even touch it. And the, and the servant says, oh, no, that's not true. He says, you're not going to die. You're not going to die. For God knows, and this is verse 5, uh, chapter 3, verse 5, for God knows in that day you may eat of it, your eyes will be opened. And you will be like God, knowing good and evil. He was more cunning. He took a little bit of truth and he added some very tempting lies he put in there. So I say we have to know the Word of God you have to know the real stuff in order to pick out a counterfeit. If you don't know the Word of God, you'll be tricked. And if you were taught the incorrect version of the gospel, like you went to a church that didn't preach the whole gospel, or you were a part of um, a different religion, then you probably got some sedu they're called seducing spirits. Not they're not like seducing like seduction, like lustful seduction, but seducing spirits that seduce the mind. They cause you not to un they'll they'll block your understanding from the word of God. And that's another way the enemy attacks the mind. You see, Paul in 2 Corinthians, he referred to Satan as an angel of light, blinding the minds of the people, blinding our minds. It is possible, and that is how the devil control, well, tries to control our minds, and he does it. He does it to Christians. He does it to non-Christians. Let's look at scorpions. Now, the Bible does mention scorpions, and it talks about how they... Uh, are dangerous <laughs> but I wanted to say this if you found a scorpion in your uh, a scorpion in your bed how would you feel I yeah I would run away I saw a flinching happening I found the scorpion in my bed one time I used to live at the base of a mountain and uh, while I was vacuuming one day I lifted up the my comforter went to the floor and so I lifted it up to vacuum under my bed and there in the crevice of the mattress in the box spring, right in the corner there was a scorpion, Scorpio, a scorpion. And um, I remember I, I, I jumped a little bit, but I'm not really afraid of um, the crawling things too much. So I thought it was fascinating, but it did startle me. So when I think about um, scorpions, I think of fear. I think of fear. And so we have the, the serpent, the snake, lies. And we have the Scorpio, the scorpion, fears. Okay. All right. And so here's Luke 10, 19, for I've given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Not just fear, not just lies or deception, and not just, uh, some people say, lies and doubts. Or, or, you know, that's kind of fearful. You're, you're not sure what to think. So, but 
God gave us authority over all the power of the enemy. And nothing will harm you. So why are we being harmed? It's a question I always like to ask. Why are we being harmed? So read that article on the website, okay? And then the other one is Satan's counterattack. Satan's counterattack. <clears throat> this article is going to give you some very valuable information. If you have gone through some type of deliverance, and I think everyone in here has experienced deliverance, if you've come to the center, if you've gotten, done it over the phone, you've been on Zoom, you've gotten some deliverance. We have what we call the 48-hour rule. Once you get deliverance, once spirits leave you, within 48 hours, they want to get back in. And they try to get back in through offense, typically. You get your feelings hurt by somebody. Usually it's a family member, a spouse, a child, maybe a roommate, someone you live with. They'll, they, if, what you need to do is for the next 48 hours, just take a step back and pay attention to this rule that these spirits are going to counterattack you by trying to get back in. This is after deliverance, okay? You might get into a car accident. You might have some, some weird occurrence happen. Are you going to get frustrated? Are you going to blame God? Are you going to take an offense through someone saying something stupid to you? Okay? You can't do it. Right? You, you gotta, I want you to observe with your eyes. <laughs> that might have happened. You want to observe with your eyes and just say, okay, that spirit's operating in that person and they're acting a fool to try to get back into me. They're trying to attack me. So you need to look at it like that. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, right? But, but against these, these evil spirits. They're always trying to attack us, okay? There will be a test. Look, this is a class that I've been coming to, you've been coming to every week. We have YouTube streamers. They're coming, they come on. I love it. They, I have so many views, like a couple hundred for every class. It makes me so happy that people are actually, and I get emails. Thank you for the emails. Um, and I really appreciate them. But look, there's going to be a test. And if you just listen to these, these little messages I do, this little teaching, you kind of watch my little, you know, teacher, teachery PowerPoints, and you think that's all you have to do, you're wrong. You have to do more. You have to do more because there is going to be a test. I don't know what your test is. I'm going to tell you about a test that I had this week. So I um, was in the airport. And I was, uh, I was in the airport, uh, the, the Atlanta airport. I got there uh, over an hour before my flight, but there were so many people in line. I had a bag to check. Uh, they told me, just go check it at the gate. Don't go to the ticket counter, just go to the gate. So I get to TSA, the line is so long. And I'm like, oh my gosh, Lord, help me. Okay. Then I'm waiting in line and I gotta go to the bathroom. I mean, like, you know, you know, you drank just too much coffee, right? I left, I got up at 4.30 that morning to drive the two hours to get to the airport, and I had had coffee and water, and I had to go to the bathroom bad. There's all these people, and I'm like, oh my gosh. So I get my, my luggage, and I get it up there, and you gotta take off your shoes, and you got a laptop, it's gotta go in this bin, and that's gotta go in that bin, and oh my gosh. And I'm like, I have to go to the bathroom, hello, alarm, you know. Um, so I'm, I find myself going, oh Lord, help me, please God. Please Lord, don't let me. <laughs> keep everything in until I get to the restroom, please. Okay. So then my bag's going through and I'm literally begging God. Oh God, please, please, Lord, help me. I was nervous. And if you ever been to the Atlanta airport after TSA, you don't go straight to the gates. You get on a, a train. 
you have to get on a train. And then where's my, where do I have to go? I started off at T, transportation, then I have to go through terminals A, B, C, D, and E. So now I'm waiting and the train's going and it's stopping and, and I'm back and forth and I'm like, oh my gosh, Lord, please. I'm begging. And I'm kind of late for my flight. I get up. I got to go up these double stairs. I find the restroom. I'm like, oh my gosh, what gate am I at? I don't even know. I end up going to the wrong gate. I did make it to the bathroom. Thank you, Lord. And then, um, I go to the wrong gate and I'm like, oh my gosh, where, where am I going? And I'm begging God the whole time. Oh, please, Lord, please. I had anxiety. Why? Because I kind of felt like I might miss my plane. I believed that God might not answer my prayer. Do you ever pray like that? Please, Lord, please answer my prayer. Can you hear me? I ran. <laughs> To the gate, they took my luggage, I got on, Whew. I get home. The next day, I was reading, actually no, it was that night, I was reading this book and it talked about how we see Father God and how we compare him to our earthly fathers. My earthly father has passed away now, but I love him very much, but he was not a perfect father. He had a really tough start in life. He had a, a hard upbringing. And so he was kind of a hard man. He could yell really loud. I was very afraid of my earthly father, <clears throat> my dad. And whenever I needed something, like um, I needed to ask him for money. My mom would always, I'd be like, mom, can I get money? Ask your father. This is every time. I can hear her still. Thanks, Mom. I can hear it still. I needed shoes for basketball. We all had to have the same shoes, so I had to buy new sneakers, new basketball shoes, right? Ask your father. I'm like, okay. I remember I cried and cried, asking, begging him, help me. Please help me. $65 for Converse sneakers is what I needed. And in the 80s, that was a lot of money. I do not know where that came from. Okay, so I, then, I, then the Lord started to click in my memory to different times where I had to ask my father for money. When I had to ask him for something, school clothes money. We needed it. We grew, right? I'm crying. And it was almost like he wanted me to cry. He like me, I don't know. I, I thought, I wasn't sure he would give me what I needed. Sometimes he didn't. Sometimes he did. Sometimes he came at me with anger and it scared me even more. Same, sometimes he hugged me and generously gave me what I asked for. I never knew how he was going to respond to me. <laughs> and the Lord... He reminded me, he said, you talk to me like I'm your earthly father. You don't know if I'm going to help you or not, and you're scared. And I had to repent and say, Lord, I'm so sorry, you're right. I pray, believing, I'm not sure if you want to answer my prayer or not. I beg you for help. Not with an expectation of, I'm going to get it, but I beg you with the thought that you might not give it to me, and I desperately need to get to the bathroom, or I'm going to make a fool of myself. I desperately need to get on that plane. And then he brought the scripture to my mind. I am your ever-present help in time of need. Yet I don't have to beg him for help. He already said, I'll give you help. So Satan controls our mind with our experiences as little girls, okay, and little boys. We, we had imperfect parents, and they conditioned us to believe that we may not get what we ask them for. Let me tell you, the Lord is good. He already said you could have help. I am your ever-present help in time of need. 
He's not going to let you stand in the middle of the airport and pee your pants. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's not going to do it. But you know what? All the fear that you experience and anxiety may cause that to happen. Is that God causing it? No, it is not. It's you. So if that is you, please repent to your Father in Heaven because He's your real Father. And He always wants to help you. Always. All right? Look, we have services here twice a week, you know, Thursday nights, Friday nights, 7 p.m., if you can come get here. You do not have to live the rest of your life feeling that fear and anxiety that you felt as a child. You don't have to. You can get deliverance. And that night, I prayed and I, and I cried before Father God in heaven, and He delivered me. And I knew I had a spirit because I felt all that anxiety, like I was a little girl again. That's how you know it's a spirit. And it came out. And I'm thankful for that. You, you, you can't come to the center? Get on Wednesday night, Zoom Deliverance with Rick Hott. Okay, you're going to go to the Facebook page, Steps of Deliverance. He starts actually, I think, at 6 o'clock at night. And they go to like midnight. You can just listen, you can turn on the camera, you can ask for prayer. They'll pray with you. They'll walk you through. They'll help you figure out what the problem, what the real problem is. The Lord revealed to me what the root problem was. I was talking to him as if I was talking to my dad. And he's like, I'm your heavenly father. I'm different. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Now, at the end of the miracle list, Brother Mike has this message, and I want to plead to everyone, not to you in the room, but you online. Brother Mike says this to everyone, please come to the Arizona Deliverance Center. Please come. Every week, we have people that come in from out of state. We've had people come from out of the country, and they get great deliverance. They get great freedom. I met with a lady today who drove four hours, over four hours, for her appointment today. Yeah, sacrifice. Okay? Um, you can receive personal one-on-one -on -one ministry, and it's free. It's free. Email Mike at hardcorechristianity.com and ask him about it, right? Ask him. Tell your friends. So I want to say this. There's two ways you can visit us and stay around here, okay? We have something called the Healing House, and I don't know if there's anybody who talks about this on YouTube, but we have the Healing House, and you can stay there for free. You can It's free accommodations, but it's not for everyone. It's for those of you who are low-income earners. You just don't have the funds to rent a, a hotel for $80, $90, $100 a night, okay? Email Mike and find out if you're eligible. It's an application that you fill out. Those of you who can afford it, and maybe it's a sacrifice. Yeah, we have to, sometimes we got to sacrifice, right? So you're coming to Central Phoenix. You're coming to an area of 15th Avenue and Thomas Road. You'll need to drive a car to get around. We're not really great with public transportation or take an Uber to get where you need to go. And plan on, uh, plan to fly in on a Wednesday and stay till a Saturday through the morning. You can get a personal deliverance appointment, and everything's free to, here at the center. We have two services. You can actually see a counselor more than once. And then Saturday morning, there's a church right down the road where you could get more deliverance. So I've met with lots of people who come. They stay for these days, and they leave like a renewed person. Okay? I'm not saying that's the end of deliverance for you, but it's a great start. If you've never had deliverance before and you're like, gosh, I don't know, um, but I think maybe I do need it, come. Get on the Wednesday Zoom call. Call the ministry line and have somebody call you back, okay? But don't wait. If you have any questions for me, I'm Julie, and uh, you can, or comments, you can email me at stepstofreedomadc at gmail.com. Thank you.